environment conditions. Ooh. So temperature, humidity, CO2, air circulation. What do you do for those things? Just you know, start wherever you want on that one. Oh, I'm a fan. I love VPDs. Uh, that was one of the first things that I began to learn, just the importance of them. And uh, that was one of the things that really caught me that Jeremy Silva was able to translate to where I could actually understand, I feel. And then I came up with my own variant of how to word it. And I feel like it helped a lot of people. Maybe uh, when I put the video out, it hit like 5,000 views of inst- or instantly on that one. And it was uh, basically just describe or explaining it as like, basically VPDs are just a distance between temperature and humidity the further apart they are the higher the number the closer they are the lower the number like 70 degrees or like 70 percent humidity is going to be like a 0.75 you know what i mean and it's just a good like way of looking at it and so i keep the troll master system in my mangrove uh i keep the vpds around 0.8 to 0.9 all the way up until the third week of flowering and then I really start cranking it in. That's when I start trying to drive the race car to my room's full capacity. Uh, I start cranking the lights up. I get my par meter to about uh, maybe like a thousand within the like fourth week or so. And then just kind of I tune it up, basically getting it like a 1.25 on the uh, VPDs. And then kind of just from there as to weeks four and five, I think I go into like a 1.4 a 1.5 on the vpds just kind of really pull them out to get them stressed at the end there and you know just kind of cater to it but that's kind of the reason i like to do uh the room the way i do instead of a perpetual grow i do all simultaneously they're all growing uh from the same age basically i basically like to cater my vpds to towards the specific age of the plant if the plant is coming in there as a younger age, I don't want to have harsh VPDs like 1.5, for instance. I would rather have VPDs of 0.8. And with the perpetual grow, you don't always have that luxury due to the fact you're going to be catering toward the plants that are in their prime, the ones that are going to be, you know, you're trying to really stress out to get them to really, you know, pop. And so it's just a, it's a mixed bag. It's kind of like a, a catch all for a doctor's office, you know, like everybody's coming in there for all these different problems, but there's one doctor to handle everything. And that's kind of the way they're treating the room, I feel, you know. And so with the basement grow, I basically, I've got the Niwa system. And the Niwa system is phenomenal. It's got a really easy to use uh, VPD chart that will also show you if your lights are on in there. Uh, Really easy to, you know, manage the app. Some of the apps can be difficult. If you've got, you know, like other brands and stuff, you'll see that their apps, I don't want to say any specific names, but their apps can be a little intimidating or confusing when it as to Niwa, their app is actually extremely easy to use because they have a um a recipes chart. And the recipe chart saves your recipes. So you could just go in there and you could put in cure and drying. And that way it saves every time. So next time you use it for your dry room, boom, you just click on cure and drying. Or you can use it in Mangro, label it Mangro, and have presets already made for it. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrow at 15 to save on any of their products.